knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. In this series, we've been working our way through the various animal phyla, and by now, you've probably realized the term jellies gets thrown around a lot. Only members of phylum Cnidaria, class Scyphozoa, are true jellyfish, which we've already covered. This means that the comb jellies of phylum Tenophora may resemble jellyfish, but are completely different organisms. The name Tenophora means comb bearer, which is how this group of animals gets its common name. All living comb jellies have comb-like plates of cilia used for locomotion. These combs are arranged in eight equally spaced bands called comb rows, which extend from a few centimeters before the mouth to a few centimeters before the anus. Tenophores, unlike the Cnidarians, Placozoans, and Porifarians that we've examined so far, have a distinct mouth and two anal pores. The mouth of a comb jelly leads into a pharynx, which empties into a branching digestive tract that ends in anal pores. Tenophores normally move their combs so that the propulsion stroke is away from the mouth, meaning that tenophores, unlike cnidarians, usually swim in the direction in which the mouth is eating, while the anus trails behind. All tenophores live in saltwater environments, and they can exist from the surface waters all the way down into the deep ocean. Many species demonstrate vertical migration through the water column based on day-night cycles, where they come to the surface to feed during the day and return to deeper waters at night, where many emit flashes of luminescence. During the day, most are colorless and almost transparent, but their comb rows produce a rainbow-like effect that is due to the prismatic scattering of light as the combs move. In addition, a few species can also produce secretions of luminescent ink in order to confuse attackers. Tenophores have a range of body types. However, some of the most commonly studied are the cytopids, lobates, and baroids. Cytopids, like the sea gooseberry, are spherical with two long tentacles that drag in the water and capture prey in epidermal glue cells known as coloblasts. These coloblasts contain an adhesive glue that binds to prey. In addition, some cytopids that feed on jellyfish are capable of incorporating their prey's stinging nematocysts into their own tentacles. Lobates, like the sea walnut, have muscular cup-like extensions of the body that extend beyond the mouth. Their tentacles originate from the corners of the mouth and run in convoluted grooves that spread out over the inner surface of the lobes. Baroids, like the cigar comb jelly, have massive pharynxes lined with large, hardened, fused cilia known as macrocilia that can be used to tear into prey too large to swallow. Their large mouths can be sealed shut by forming intercellular connections when not feeding or when digesting prey. Some other highly modified tenophore body types include the compressed and ribbon-shaped band animals like the Venus girdle, the medusa-like thalassocalici, and the flattened creeping platytenida that lack comb rows. The germ layers of the diploblastic tenophores are similar to the cnidarians, except that instead of a mesoglea that separates the epidermis and gastrodermis, tenophores have a colenchyme that contains the muscle cells and amoeboid cells. In addition, tenophores are considered to be biradial, since their arrangement of internal canals and tentacles in many species change their symmetry from radial into a combination of radial and bilateral. Comb jellies have a nerve network which forms a ring around the mouth and is concentrated under each comb plate. Though they have no brains or eyes, they do have abundant sensory cells that line their epidermis, and a large aboral organ opposite the mouth that functions as a statocyst, or balance sensory receptor. 
Most tenophores, except for three known species, are monoecious, which again means that any individual can create both types of gametes within its own body. Gonads are stored on the lining of the gastrovascular canals under the comb plates, and gametes, or sperm and eggs, are released during synchronous spawning. Eggs are generally fertilized outside of the body, but some species, like the sea gooseberry, use internal fertilization and keep the eggs in brood chambers until they hatch. Self-fertilization has occasionally been seen in the sea walnuts, and it is possible that most monoecious comb jellies are capable of self-fertilization. In any case, the larval forms of most species are very similar in appearance and behavior to the adults, just smaller. Adult tenophores will produce gametes while they have a ready supply of food, but if food grows scarce, they will first halt production of gametes, then shrink their bodies. If food becomes readily available again, they will reverse the process by expanding their bodies and then resuming production of gametes. And with the tenophores covered, we've now discussed all of the non-triploblastic animal phyla. Let's move forward and see what we can uncover next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.